Thank you for choosing to listen to this message by our pastor, Brother Mike Beachy. Let us join now with the saints of God with open hearts and minds into a service already in progress. He that has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. song together and turn it back to dad. Let's sing that song together when he was on the cross. I was on his mind. Praise God. Ain't you glad this is not an ego trip? Praise the Lord. I'm not on an ego trip. I'm nothing my own I make mistakes and often slip it's common flesh and bone 
But I'll prove one day just what I say. I'm of a special kind. When he was on that cross, I was on his He knew. kind of faith. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. Somebody say praise the Lord. Amen. How many can say amen to that? Amen. amen. You can be seated. Amen. I believe we were on his mind, don't you? I believe when he said, except you be doers of the word and not just hearers only, I believe we were on his mind. All the things he taught and left with us, because I believe we were on his mind. He looked down through the pages of time and saw us here today, left us just what we need. Amen. Words of instruction, good indoctrination. Amen. All right. As, uh, maybe as we prepare to uh, give an offering, I want you to uh, remember, there's been a lot going on lately and uh, a lot of need and been a lot of funerals, and uh, of course, Brother Michael's tried to help and do what he could. And uh, so, just remember these things. And if you got any extra you want to give and share, and kind of, you know, give a little boost, it'd really be appreciated because a lot of folks are in need right now. And if you got it, then uh, you know you can be assured the Lord will give it back to you. Amen. How many's ever found out you can't give to God except He give it back to you? Amen. I tell you, give 
a little bit, and he rewards so much for so little. Amen. Brother Michael, how about, won't you come up this morning, uh, maybe lead us in a song as we uh, give an offering, and uh, maybe say something for the Lord. Amen. You know, uh, Brother, uh, I believe it was Stefan. Yeah. The other evening, he said, Brother Jimmy, come up and uh, uh, sing an offering song. So I thought, what's a good offering song? And I didn't think it at the time, but when I sat down, I thought, I surrender. I surrender all. You know, that would probably be the best offering song. And, uh, but this morning, we not only need to surrender what finance, but we need to surrender our heart, our thoughts, our motives, intentions, any plans for the future. We need to surrender to Christ Jesus this morning. All right, brother Mike. How's everybody doing this morning? We had a real good Bible study last night. A lot of the kids, different ones. I think Mike, Mike Dunn and his kids even came. And uh, some of them's out that was there last night. But I think it was the, we named a, the Bible study. It's called The Power of the Tongue. You know, a lot of times, uh, you know, Joey's in the hospital, and I done claimed it in my heart. Before all this happened, and I had a peace in my heart. I thought, uh, you know, he's going to come out. I don't care what people say. I decreed it in my heart that the boy's going to be fine. And uh, I know things happen for a reason sometimes, you know, to shake us up, to let us know where we're at, to where we need to draw in closer, family looking on, to where, you know, maybe the Lord's trying to reach them. But uh, hello, Joey, I miss him. And I think some of us, some of the kids, are just going to go by and see him. But, you know, I heard, had heard last night that he's doing a lot better. And they took him off the machine. And uh, I don't know if anybody already mentioned a lot of that. He didn't mention this morning, but... But uh, anyway, I'm just, I thank God for his healing power. And uh, let's just give God a hand. I tell you, I appreciate the Lord. I tell you, if I, I'll try to sing that song. I don't know if I remember it. Let's see. Uh, does that go on? I surrender all. <laughs> I'll surrender all. <laughs> let's sing now. You brought it up. All <laughs> mm. oh, to Jesus. How's it, how's it go? Y'all help me. Under all to Him I freely give. I will ever love and trust Him in His presence daily. Live. I surrender.
that good song and truly this morning we need to be surrendering all amen ain't that right all right as brother michael prepares to come maybe the ladies uh sister beverly y'all uh i don't know if y'all got a song you can maybe sing this morning all right praise the lord prepare our hearts for, for the good word of god this morning and uh you know it's like mentioned before Jesus gave the parable about the foolish man built his house on the sand the wise man built his house on the rock and uh, you know we I've thought about it so many times how that rock is Christ and that's true that's true but he said uh, it's not them that are just hearers of the word but the doers of the word that doing the word is building your house on the rock because when the storms come and all the trials and the winds of adversity come, if you've been doing the Word of God, you know what's going to happen? You're going to stand strong. You're going to stand strong. And, uh, you know, because the Bible tells us if we do the things of God, we comfort our heart. And it gives us confidence to know that God is on our side. But when we're just hearers of the Word, and I believe, I believe, and go our way and do our own thing, you know, when adversity comes and 
all these contrary winds come, you know what? It erodes our foundation because we've not been doing the things of God. So it's very important, very important that when we hear these things, hear the Word of God, that we let them find a good, deep place right here and put them into action. I uh, saw a little sign yesterday on a church down close to Covington and it said, uh, Reading and meditation are to no avail without application. So to read and study and meditate, that's so wonderful. We need to do it, but then we need to apply it. And I'm, I'm speaking to Jimbo. I'm speaking to him. He needs to apply. He needs to be a doer. All right, let's give the Lord a good old hand this morning. Lord bless you. Take for granted 
hard to see it now You feel you're walking all alone He is there, no doubt When the storm around you rages And you're tossed to and fro When you're faced with life's decisions Not sure which way to go says sometimes that's hard to do. We want to help the Lord, don't we? I like to help Him out. Patience is not exactly one of our better qualities. Can we go to the Lord in prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank You for Your presence this morning, Your love, Your mercy, and Your kindness to God. Lord, as we see the turmoils of life and things that's going on around us. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just ask that you would open our hearts and minds, dear God, that we could see into the mind of Christ and understand 
what you're doing in this last day and time. Lord, that we'll know how to better, Lord, equip ourselves. Lord, even with the mind to suffer for the cause of Jesus Christ. Lord, and may we understand how to put on your word, that helmet of salvation, the breastplate, dear Heavenly Father, the sword of the Spirit. Oh, Lord, may we be fully equipped. Lord, we'll just give you the praise and the glory and the honor. Jesus' precious holy name. Amen. You may be seated. There was a, some scriptures we was looking at the other evening. Uh, it seemed like I run across another one of those scriptures. Uh, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Read that, we think of that famous words by Moses as he stood there at the Red Sea. And they was getting ready to cross. And you know, they was in a situation where they couldn't go forwards or backwards. And they had no choice but to depend on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, I, I'm glad today that you know, we really don't have a choice, do we? We're in a situation in the day that we're living in that we have to depend upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we see all the world around us. and So it's good to know that the Lord is with us. Uh, I was thinking of the prayers of several men in the Scriptures, how they uh, made their supplication. Brother Richard mentioned the letter of... I believe it was Hezekiah, was it? Spread before the Lord. God came in and said, Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And uh, also there was another one of the men at one time, I believe maybe Jehoshaphat, and he cried out to God. He prayed. God heard his prayer. Aren't you glad he still hears our prayer? Amen. Amen. Sometimes we just need to call out to him. Sometimes we get to the place, we're going through that valley, and it seems that there's uh, just seems to be no way out. It just seems like so much darkness and gloom and doubt and frustration. And, but I'm glad that we can find that solace place with Him. And He comes and He hears our prayer. Just looking at the words of that song, I Surrender All. It's got some beautiful verses there, you know. And... Uh, a prayer, a commitment to the Lord Jesus Christ. I think that's wonderful, amen? And uh, so God is doing something, and sometimes we say, you know, we might not quite understand it, comprehend it, might not see exactly what the whole picture is, but uh, you can be sure God is still in control. He's still in control. Someone sent that a, a verse of Scripture, uh, Isaiah 41 and 10, I believe it was, said, the Lord God is with thee. He hears you. And uh, I believe he's with us this morning. Amen. I believe he's still with us. And, and I, I want to be with him. You know, he, he, he's with his people, but, you know, I want to be with him. <laughs> Amen. So it's easy for us to go astray. You know, he, he's, he's there. His word is sure. It's to a thousand generations. And he's not going anywhere. But, uh, you know, sometimes we as people, as sheep, we go astray. But I'm glad... He doesn't go astray, amen? And I had a, a, something on my mind, and I don't really know, uh, you know, what would come from it, but I uh, thought we'd just look at something for just a few moments and uh, just see if the Lord would give us something that we could take with us and maybe give you something to think about and study on uh, that we see in the Scriptures. Uh, listening, uh, some of them had mentioned to me about uh, uh, John Hagee has been preaching about, and he's written a book, The Four Blood Moons, and I don't know if anybody has seen any of this, and it's quite uh, striking, some of the things, uh, and they're, according to NASA, uh, we're looking at seeing these four blood moons and an eclipse in the next 15 months, I believe it is. And it's pointing out how that there's things that have happened when these four blood moons and cycles have come. Uh, 
significant things in history has taken place. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about that, and I thought, Lord, you know, it seems like there's a lot of projection to 2014, and, you know, we, there was, you know, we would have thought maybe there would have been maybe more significant things, even in 13, uh, and I'm sure there's a lot of things that's taken place that maybe we haven't noticed, you know, but uh, it's easy to get blinded, you know, we get... Uh, called away with cares of life or maybe we're not paying attention. But thinking about that and, and thinking of 2013, was thinking, you know, the year of the bride and, uh, and then uh, listening to messages and things, you, you run across things. And, but I was thinking about that and, and Brother Branham had mentioned about Revelation 13 having to do with America. And it reads about the beast coming up out of the waters. I'm familiar with that. Maybe we'll look at some of those scriptures this morning and just see if we can take a, just a little bit of a look and see if the Lord would help us to maybe see just a little bit of where maybe we're at. Because we're in a, when we say, we've heard the preachers say perilous times, but we're in dangerous times. Uh, religiously speaking, it's, uh, uh, it's a time, a day, and an hour when every man does that which is right in his own eyes. And, uh, and they, don't, they don't only do what's right in their own eyes, they turn around and justify it by the Word of God. So uh, we have to be so careful. The Bible says that in the last days there would be many false prophets, be false teachers that would arise and lead people astray. It speaks of leading silly women. It speaks of uh, silly women. We know that has to do with even the flesh and even the church that are not rooted and grounded on the Word of God. And I tend to believe, as Brother Kenny said earlier, that we've been taught a doctrine that's been grounded on the Word of God. And uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a battle, but, you know, I believe we must maintain. Amen. And, uh, and how do we do that? Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. Let that Word stay in you and let that, Jesus said, let His words abide in us. And so we need to keep that front and center. Let's just look at that as laying a foundation here maybe, and I may end up reading several scriptures chapters of scripture this morning if that would be okay and uh, just look at this just for a moment as I said the other night I don't claim some great spiritual insight I haven't claimed you know some greatness in the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, I'm just here to serve the purpose that God has for me I'm not a brother Branham a brother George uh, I just a mere son of God, amen, and uh, just doing my best to be a servant of the Lord, and so we all have our place, but whatever that place may be, I want to fulfill it, amen, and uh, the thing is, is we are living, I believe, in the end time, uh, we see things coming to pass and happening, and just like this with the, the, the blood moons, uh, and I'll go into that just a little bit more, I don't have a whole lot of details, but a few things. Uh, one thing is they fall on the Passover and then the Sukkot, I believe it is. Sukkot. Sukkot. Feast, of Feast of Tabernacles. And uh, it starts this April, I believe, the 15th. is the first one on the Passover. Uh, and it goes over into 2015. And on the in-between of these, there's two blood moons and then there's a solar eclipse, and then there's two more. And uh, there's some things that tie into that, and if you look in the Scriptures, uh, as they was given reference over to the book of Joel, it speaks about the sun being darkened and the moon turning to blood. And uh, so we see these things happening, and uh, God, we know, gives us signs in the heavens. He's given us signs in the heavens, spoke to man through the heavens, throughout eternity or throughout man's time here on earth. So we see that, and thinking about that, you know, 
that's where a lot of debate comes in as to man's time on earth, amen? And, you know, and then we're debating back and forth, and we've got the evolution, and, and then we have creationists, and, you know, I have all these things, and uh, back and forth we go. But I, I tend to think that I'll just stay with the Word of God. I believe this is my safety net, my safe zone, and I believe if I stay in here, even if there's something I don't understand, I believe that He will help me. Amen. If I stay right there, I think everything will be all right. And uh, that's what we look to do. And looking in the book of Revelation for just a moment, as we lead into chapter 13, just kind of looking over uh, the book of Revelation a little bit, and you know, we've all been taught as to we believe that the, the church will be called out before the tribulation and the tribulation sets in. And uh, the church goes out at the end of the days of the Gentiles. That's to the days of grace. And that's part of the grace that will be lifted as the church going out. Because once the salt leaves, the meat spoils. And as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, right before the, uh, the fire fell, God called Lot and his family out. Uh, before the flood came, he took Mo Noah into the ark. And uh, that was another thing that was kind of striking. They got some religious films and things coming forth. And there was one called Noah, uh, the end, uh, just the beginning, I think is how it was, or something like that there, uh, having to do with the end time. And a lot of focus on the end time. And uh, But we see that, and after you look at the book of Revelation, after, you know, we come through the first few chapters there and there, we see the church ages or the churches that the Lord is speaking to and then there was a door open in heaven and then we seen a book that had been written, sealed on the back side, seven seals in chapter five and we seen a lamb come forth and open those seals, begin to open the seals, begin to see things take place as these seals begin to be opened. And, uh, and as these seals were opened, then it got over, uh, the six of the seals were opened and got over to chapter 8, and, and then the seventh seal was opened. Uh, in the middle of the sixth seal there, there was uh, the tribes of Israel was sealed. The uh, Bible speaks that there was 12,000 of each tribe, and it names the tribes of those that were sealed. And we can see that as to the Gentile age coming to a close, Going, God returning back to the Jews. How many knows that God has chosen the Jews as his special people for a purpose? It wasn't because of they were any particular thing, but when, when God chooses you, then you're special. There ain't nothing you can do about that. It's just God chooses to use you for something, and that's just his choosing. He's God, amen? And so that's what's so beautiful about the whole situation. God is still God, amen? I believe that. And uh, so then we see the seventh seal opened and speaks of silence in heaven. And then there was seven angels that stood. And then they began to sound these trumpets. And uh, here again, I'm not going to try to uh, uh, maybe get into some of those things. But I'm just thinking about those trumpets as they, they're beginning to sound. And things begin to happen. And, uh, and then it gets over chapter 9, the fifth angel sounds. And there the bottomless pit is opened up. And then in, in between the sixth and seventh trumpet, then the, we see this as to, I saw another mighty angel come down in chapter 10. And uh, he, he, he began to declare that time should be no more. There was a wonderful thing coming forth. And, and uh, we see this happening. And he began to uh, swear that by him that lived forever and ever that uh, who created the heavens and the things that aren't, Therein are and the earth and the things therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. But it says then in verse 7, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. And it says when he should begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Then it begins in chapter 11, it begins to measure the temple. Now we see where it had, had opened up as even to the, the Jews going back as to that ceiling of that there. Uh, 144,000. Well, see, then it begins in chapter 11, and there was a, a, a read given, and, and it began to measure that temple. And here we see the two olive trees that come forth, and we believe that to be Moses and Elijah. 
And they come forth and they begin to tutor that as to the Israels, as to bringing them back to the Messiah, to bring that understanding. You can be sure when Moses and Elijah, if that's the, and we believe that's the way it will be, that when they come on the scene, the Bible said they'd have power to shut up the heavens. They begin to do these things that Israel is going to pay attention. They're going to begin to listen. And when they see the signs, when they begin to see the things that confirms that this is Moses and Elijah, they will begin to turn and they begin to weep and they'll begin to cry uh, for the Messiah. So we see this and, and so we see these things happening. And then it's not till after that, and it's kind of, you know, I know we got a lot of takes on these, on the seals and the messengers and the trumpets and all these things, you know, and, and I'm not here to argue, dispute, or take anything away from it because, like I said, I'm not trying to say that I understand anything. But I see that even after this, that is when that their seventh angel begins to sound. Even after, there, and, and we liken them there two prophets to be in the tribulation period. So then we see in this seventh thing, so I, I just wonder sometimes if we get things out of sequence just a little bit, okay? So I, I'm just saying, I'm just going by what the Word of God says here. So we see this, and it, and it speaks of the things that happened. And then in 11.15, it says, And the seventh angel sounded, and there was great voices, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and He shall reign forever and ever. And then it goes on to chapter 12. There was a great wonder in heaven. A woman uh, appeared there in heaven, with a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet. Now, uh, you know, I'm thinking about this, and we think of Israel uh, bringing forth a man-child. I know a lot of times we might liken this even as to the church. But as we look at this, the sun, she's clothed with the sun, the moon under her feet. And we know that the moon there has to do with the night or the types, the shadows, even the Old Testament. And if we see that foundation in here, if we look and we think that, well, maybe Moses and Elijah has come. And maybe they have indoctrinated as to the Messiah. Now they have taken that mind of Christ and accepted that. They've been clothed with the sun. And now they're, they're standing on that foundation. What did the Old Testament do but tell them that there's coming a Messiah? And so we see this, and, and, and then we see that there was a man-child that was born. And the Bible says that the man-child was caught up to the throne as soon as it was born, and it began to rule with a rod of iron. And uh, then there was a, a, a dragon that says that there was a, the woman fled into the wilderness where she had the place prepared of God that she should be fed there a thousand two hundred three score days. And there was war in heaven. It speaks of Michael and the angels coming and, and the dragon and they fought and there was not place found and the dragon was cast out. When we, we think about this, this dragon was cast out into the earth and the Bible says, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth for Satan has come unto you. So he has, has, has climbed up through the intellectual reasoning and the blood life. He has climbed up into that second heaven and, and he's found grace there and he has used grace and, and, and manipulated that to use that to get life so he could sustain himself, so he could live. And the only way he can have life is the way if we yield it to him. The only way he... See, he was cast out of that third heaven at the fall in the garden. He was cast out. But he climbed back up through that blood life, got into man, because what did he do? God doesn't want you to really eat of that. You won't surely die. He began to cast doubt about God. And he, why? Man was in charge. Man was in control. It'd be just like if there's an army that comes and, and besieges the city and, and, or the country. If that general then goes and submits and surrenders, now the enemy is in charge. They, they put up their flag. They're the ones in control. Now, he has surrendered. Even if they don't kill him, he still is their subject. And this is what Satan did. And he did it through deception. How many knows they did that in World War II? Hitler, they come into the France and these different places, and they would tell them, oh, everything's going to be all right. Look, we just need to do a peace treaty. We're not going to bother anything. We're not going to hurt anyone. We're not going to do anything. You just sign this peace treaty and we're just going to go on and, and everything's going to be okay. We know that it wasn't. That was not their plan. Their plan was to take over. But they used deception. And, and, and Satan will do this. And, and that's the whole thing 
that bothers me of the day that we're living in, Satan, Satan is still using deception. And he's very shrewd and he's very good at it. Don't think that you're a match for the devil. You're not. You're not a match for the devil. Not on your own. You're not a match. Now, if you got Jesus on your side, he ain't got a chance. Amen. That's kind of like dropping the ink in the bleach, you know. He's gone. Amen. So we just, we just, as the song said, we just need to surrender all. So we see this. So Satan has come down. He was cast out. That old serpent called the devil. And, and he said, and I heard loud voices saying in heaven, now has come salvation and strength. See, now I believe that happens also. You know, we can look at things in different perspectives, but I believe that also happens when we give our life to Jesus Christ. When we give that there man child his place on the throne in his rightful place, kingdom of heaven is within you, and he comes in, he casts Satan out of your world. That's how we defeat him. That's how we cast him out is allow Jesus to come in. And say the Bible says he was the accuser of the brethren which accused them day and night before our God. And it says they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony and the love and loved not their lives unto the death. But then it goes on to chapter 13. So I'm looking at this and it seems that there's been a change into the, the, the uh, Jewish, back into the earthly Jewish perspective. And, but then we look at 13, Satan's been cast, cast out. And then it says, I stood upon the sand of the sea and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea having seven heads and ten horns and upon his horns crowns and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leper and his feet was as the feet of a bear and his mouth as a mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave his power and his seat and great authority. Gave, gave him his power. And we say the dragon, that's Satan. The old red dragon. There were several different names that Satan had. It was Lucifer. It was Satan, the devil, the red dragon. So we see this as he's operating here. And he's that red dragon, he's given his power to this beast. It came up out of the water. Wow, man, that's a freaky looking thing. Boy, that's going to be wild. Wow. It ain't going to look near as freaky as what you think. He'll be just as smooth. Might even wear a suit and tie. He might wear a rope. He might wear a little cap. He might not wear a cap. He might have a beard. He might not have a beard. But he will be smooth. People will never recognize him as the beast. Everybody's looking for the Antichrist. Where's he at? That's him. It's the president. It's the pope. It's that preacher over yonder. Now, there will be a manifestation, but best quit looking over yonder somewhere. Because until you find him in your own life, you got to find him in your own life. This is the temple where he's standing making himself God. That's right. That's where you got to cast him out from. So it says the beast was like a leopard. And I saw one of his heads as if it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. And the world wandered after the beast. You know the heads had to do with power. He said he had seven heads. He had ten horns. He's got great strength. We know that there, the papacy even sets on seven hills. And they worship the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And, and, and they worship the beast saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And his mouth was giving him great, uh, speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given to him to continue 40 and two months. And he opens his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. It was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. Now think about this. Where do you find in any 
power in any, whether it be political, religious, or where, where do you find that much power? Where do you find authority and recognition on this level? It's in the Catholic Church. That's where you see it. Is that the beast? Is that, I'm just saying, let's just look at some things. Because, like I said, I believe the Antichrist spirit is a spirit, exactly what it is. And it moves and it works, it operates, and it uses anybody it can. It uses presidents, it uses politicians, congressmen, senators. It uses your governors, it uses the religious realm, it uses preachers. A lot of times the preachers over here, we want to point back, ah, yes, that's their Catholic church, it's the Pope. What about the daughters of the Harlot Church? Well, they act just like her. They're doing just like she is. It said that he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. All right, what have we been taught? Ye are they that sit together in heavenly places. Are they that dwell in heaven? They want to mock that. And then what did it say? He was given power. To, it was given him, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. One of the things that happened on the blood moons, with these four blood moons, I haven't researched this, just going by what I heard. First time that we know of at this point was 1492. We all know what took place 1492. Columbus sailed the ocean blue. But there was something else they were saying that took place. It was the year that the Catholic Church in Spain was persecuting the Jewish people and was causing them, I think they gave them like 14 days to evacuate. Was many of them was killed. Many things happened. And said that the Jewish people, they give their maps and their money to another Jewish man by the name of Christopher Columbus, said, find us a place of worship, a land we can have freedom. I'm just talking about, so I'm thinking, wait a minute. You know, here comes out from that, and it comes to America. Either way, we see that this religious mindset has come to America. Is it a true mindset or is it false? I think if we go to the Word of God, we find that there's a lot of faults. There might be some truth interwoven in there. But the principles and the doctrines are false. We've got people worshiping saints instead of God. St. Saint Mary can't save you. She was a great person, but we read in the scripture the other day where it said that even they that are in the kingdom of God was greater than blessed Mary. Jesus said this. Just like he said, he that is in the kingdom of God is greater than John. So we can have Saint John, we can have Saint Francis, we can have Saint whatever it may be. But we only have one Lord and Savior. That's Jesus Christ. The Bible says he is the mediator. Not she, not those, not them, but him, the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I'm, look at this, and then I didn't realize maybe that the leaving of Columbus had to do anything with the Jews, okay? Then we see in 1948 how did Israel became a nation. Another sign, the Bible says that this would happen. Even in Isaiah, prophesied how they would come back even on the eagle's wings. We know how that had happened. Even the airplanes and things, even from America, that brought them back into their homeland. Declared a state. It was another sign. It was another time of the blood moons. Another time of the blood moons in 1967, again with the Jews. I'm just saying, is it striking that this would be coming up 
we talk about the time of the bride and how that this thing is coming to a close and we're moving into another era here and now we're looking at this once again. Could there be something that God is doing and trying to tell us? Is he speaking to us? And I'm thinking about this as Revelation 13 because then we see once again past that talking about that beast and uh, another beast came forth and all this here. And then the next one we see past that, then we see in chapter 14 going back again, bringing back in the 144,000. As the lamb stood on Mount Zion, the 144,000 sealed with their father's name. And they sang a song. And we see these things, and I'm saying, Lord, where are we at? What kind of times? Then someone posted something concerning the Pope. Some of you may have seen this. I believe it was Brother Rob. The Pope has made a statement saying that Adam and Eve was just fictional. And that heaven and hell is just a phrase. Now, you, you think about this here. The Pope carries a lot of weight. And people all over the world, even in different religions, they pay attention to what the Pope says. Saying, what am I seeing? Once again, I see Satan at work. Oh, this really didn't happen. It was just a figure of speech. It was maybe just a type and a shadow. And it was just something, you know, that... You know, God used to, to, to paint a picture, to give us a story. And then we'll go from Adam and Eve. We'll go as to the creation. And then we'll go to the virgin birth. And really that wasn't like they said. And Jesus wasn't exactly... See where I'm going? This is what Satan does. He wants to water down. The word of God. He wants to take away the foundation of righteousness and truth. He wants to erode that foundation. And what's he doing? He's using religious leaders, religious minded people that are full of religiosity. But if I can just type and shadow everything, after a while, I can just, you know, I, and what happens? We become even as Satan said. Oh, we become as gods. And after all, I can make the scripture. I can write the scripture. I'm even as God. I can do it the way I want. It's me now making the decisions. Oh, people wouldn't think that way. Oh, my brothers and sisters, yes, they would. Even if they won't say it, they think that way. Why do you think people go their way and do their own thing and don't worry about serving God? Because they have no fear of consequences. You put a sign up and say the bridge is out. Whoopie do. So I step on the gas. I don't believe it no how. Besides that, just a type in the shadow. Find out how much type and shadow it was. You know, if it's just a type and a shadow, then I have to wonder, why did Paul bother to preach what he preached? Why did he bother to write there in, in, in Corinthians that all these here perversions and adulterers and drunkards and all these different things, uh, lies and cheats and stuff, will not inherit the kingdom of God? Why did he bother? It's all a type in the shadow. Anyhow, what difference does it make? Why does he tell us in the scripture numerous of times that we'll give an account for every deed done in the body? That's what it says. We can look them up and point them out to you. Why does it say that? See, 
We're living in a world of deception. We're living in a world of deception. And people are buying into it. People are buying into it. And then I think of America. I think is, is that where that beast is coming from? Is that America? We see Israel, but is that America? We see that, you know, America, a, a great nation, God has raised this nation up. And we see this, but what's it becoming? What has it become? What has it become? I think about that man child being called up. I think he has an identity. So I say the churches, they're following suit, even as to the Catholic traditions. What was it? The Council of Worms, 325, they took away the name of Jesus. Why? Because of their pagan ritualistics. The paganism had crept into the church, just like God told them, when they was crossing the Jordan, said, don't intermingle with these here pagan worshipers because they're going to lead you astray. As long as you keep them maybe as friends, maybe if you keep them as the other people, as long as you keep a distance there, you begin to marry them, now they're your family. How many knows family is the hardest one to deal with? You can say no to a lot of people, but when it comes to family, it's hard to cut those ties. God knew this. And he told him, so what has happened? We come here with freedom of religion, and now they've used that as, we'd say, days of grace. And now we have everything from Satan worshipers to kind of, you know, the atheists, they want their time. Everyone is calling for their holiday or their whatever. Where have we fallen to? What have we come into? Come into this religious mindset that is dooming us and damning us to hell. I says, well, hell is just a figure of speech. It's, well... I don't want to find out. I can tell you one thing. Whether it be flames or whether it be separation from God or whatever, I can tell you one thing. It is a miserable place. I've experienced a little bit of it, and you don't want to go. Oh, I haven't experienced, as we say, what Jesus was saying even to he said, what about Lazarus and the rich man? Now, he was the one that talked about it. So if you got a problem with it, go talk to Jesus. Might do you some good. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. So we see, so I'm thinking, Lord, here we are in this religious. And then I go over to Isaiah. And thinking about this, and, and in 58, and I want to read from 59, but I just want to kind of highlight just a moment here as we look at this. Because in 58 it says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. And it goes on to talk about how that they have their daily rituals and their sacrifices and it says you fast, but you don't fast to make your voice be heard on high. But you fast to smite with the fist or smiting with your own self-righteousness. We become so religious. Talk to people about anywhere. And, and man, they can just talk to you about God. And let's go have a beer while we're doing it. Some of them might even smoke a joint with you while they, so they can get into that mind. 
religious. We're living in a religious world. But we have forsaken the ordinances of God. If you have any confidence, if you have any, uh, put any stock in the words, the message that Brother George preached, if you have any question, go get that message. You've left my ordinances. It'll help you. But it speaks of this, it's a religious. And it goes on to talk about being the repair of the breach. But then in 59, I'm, I'm thinking of Revelation 13, and then I'm thinking here of chapter 59. And it says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy that it cannot hear. God is saying, I haven't went anywhere. It's your iniquities that have separated. I ha I'm still here. My hand's not short. I I'm not dull of hearing. I don't need hearing aids. Listen to what he says. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear why? Because he can't. That is his law. That is his principle. That is his ordinance. He has set guidelines. And he's saying, you're either going to work in accordance with these guidelines or I'm not hearing you. I don't care how big your church is. I don't care how small your church is. I don't care how big your denomination or if you don't even have one. He says, that has nothing to do with it. Your iniquities, your sins have separated. Your sins. Is it possible? Is it possible that that little country preacher that came to Monroe, Georgia in 1970. That was just so far out. When he preached and he said that sports is of the devil. Would it be possible that maybe he was right? We would think at times how in the world could that be right? when every church on the planet has a sports program. We would think, how could that be right? How could that be correct? Say so many times, you tell me, what does it glorify? What does it promote? Where does it lead? Where does it lead? I think of even this Pope that come in with such humility. Such humility. And I'm sure as a person, he is probably a wonderful man. But don't be deceived. If he can stand and make a statement that these things are fictional. And you see him making space, you know, not to be judgmental toward homosexuals. These different things. And I know we have the argument. They can't help it. They're born this way. They, I, I, you know, I, I'm not going to scientifically try to argue that point as to whether they were or they weren't. I say we were all born in sin. But one thing I do know, the Bible says that it's an abomination. Somebody said, but we got feelings. Yeah, I know. And you know what? Sometimes as a man... There can be an ill-fine woman walking to your presence, and you know what? You might have feelings. 
So what are you going to do with it? Well, I don't know what most of people's going to do. They're going to do just like what the world does. They're going to go commit adultery and then, then condone it. <laughs> but what would he do? We said, well, I had feelings. Sure, you got feelings. The devil knows that and he plays on it. He uses the passions. He uses those things. What's that got to do with it? We've got to come back to the Word. The Word says it's wrong. That's why they think that we're a little bit touched. That we're just a little bit demented because anybody that would believe, take that literally. I mean, come on, give me a break. I'm trying my best to take every bit of it for just what it said. I'm saying, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. The parts I don't understand, the part I can't under comprehend, God, help me to take it as your word. Because you said in here that it was written as men were inspired by the Holy Ghost. I'm saying, God, help me to believe it through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. That's what's wrong with the world today. We're not receiving it. We're not reading it. And we're not hearing it. We're not believing it by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, we got an intellectual concept. And we're doing just like Adam and Eve did when they partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And it's bringing death. But I want something else. Jesus came and he offered hope. Even in a dying world. Man. So he says, your iniquity. He says, for your hands are defiled with blood. And your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue hath muttered perverseness. We ain't heard the perverseness that we've heard in the day that we're living in. When you take a state that passes a law that when children go to school, Depending on what they feel like that day, they can use the boys' or the girls' bathroom. How stupid. Do you hear me? I, I wish I could broadcast this so everybody in America could hear it at once. I probably wouldn't get but one chance, and nobody would like me. How stupid. That is ignorance gone to seed. I mean, that is... The, the stupidest thing that I've ever heard of. And these people are supposed to be educated. They talk about being tolerant. Tolerant for what? Stupidity. That's what the tree of knowledge will do for you. Perverseness. We're living in a perverted society. You better put up your guard or you will be going down the same trail. I'm telling you, you'll be doing the same thing. I will, I will never, you'll make allowance for it and you will condone. Well, they're just, they can't help it. That's just the way they are. Well, you know what? I couldn't help it either. But Jesus Christ came and he saved me and he helped me help it. He'll help you help it. People don't want to be helped. They like their life the way that it is. They'll meet the judgments of God. I don't care if it isn't popular. I don't care if they don't believe it. I don't care if they want to scientifically try to prove that this ain't right. It doesn't matter. It's still the Word of God. Amen. When we stand in the day of judgment, they'll find out it's exactly the way He said. None calleth for justice, nor any pleadeth for truth. They trust in vanity and speak lies. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. They don't want righteousness. They don't want truth. They don't want justice. They don't want judgment. What do they think? Oh, that's the law. We're past the 
law. We're out from under the law. That's not us. Perverseness. You've perverted the word of God. They hatch cockatrice eggs. And are snake eggs. John said, you generation of vipers. Wouldn't you like to see John on TV again? Just once. Wouldn't that be great? I can say the introduction. Man, folks, you ain't going to believe what we got here today. We got John the Baptist himself in his camel's hair. Here he is. Oh, listen to that message. A generation of vipers. Did I call a network? <laughs> Mischief and bringing forth iniquity. Hatching cockatrice eggs. And weave the spider's web. He that eateth of their eggs dieth. And that which is crushed breaketh into a viper. Hey, they, they eat the eggs. The, the, the things that's coming forth from them that's supposed to be nutritious. It's corruption. All this here is just a fable. It's just a fiction. It's imagination of the mind. It really didn't happen. Well, if that didn't happen, then I guess maybe when God said, let there be, maybe that didn't happen. And he said, let there be stars in the heavens. Maybe that didn't happen. Maybe when he said that the Red Sea opened up, maybe that didn't happen. Brother Mike, they didn't prove that one wrong a long time ago. Where you been? Maybe there wasn't a virgin birth. Maybe that didn't happen. Maybe there really wasn't a Savior that came and died for our sins. Maybe that didn't happen. Where are we at then if that didn't happen? If this Word of God is not true, then what has happened? What hope do we have outside the Word of God? If this isn't true, if this isn't our foundation, if we can't stand on this, then what do we have? Some professor's intellectual reasoning? Oh, but man, two million years ago. How do you know? They didn't leave us a letter. They didn't have any birth certificates. Where did they really start picking up with man? About 10,000 years ago. That's where they start really picking up with man. Before that is all what? It's a fiction of their imaginations what it is. They want to explain away God. The Bible said in the beginning, God. God. That's all it was. In the beginning, it was God. Outside of that, there wasn't anything else. It was God. But if they can do away with God, if they can do away with the authenticity of this word, then they don't have to live any which way that, you know, they don't have to live and conform to this because there ain't no God. There's no consequences. You see what the devil's trying to do? I ain't talking about people out there outside the church. I'm talking about the church. I'm talking about this religious world. It's become corrupt. A cage of every unclean and hateful bird. All kind of evil spirits are in the church. This is what we got to fight against. <laughs> None call for justice. They hatch cockatrice. Their webs shall not become garments. Neither shall they cover themselves with their works. Their works are works of iniquity. And the, acts, the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil. And they make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction 
are in their paths. The way of peace they know not. And there is no judgment in their goings. They have made them crooked paths. Whosoever goeth therein shall not know peace. Why? It's the tree of knowledge. Jesus Christ, they have rejected. He is the Prince of Peace. Outside of Him, there is no peace. Outside of Him is confusion and chaos. Satan is the author of confusion. That's how you know it's the devil. Therefore is judgment far from us. Neither does justice overtake us. We will wait for light, but behold obscurity for brightness, but we walk in darkness. We think that this is light. Sad to say, but there's many that think that it is revelation when they've been overcome by the darkness of the carnal mind. They've mistaken. They've misplaced. And they've grabbed a hold of a shadow. And it's not going to bring nothing but death. David said, yea, though I walk through this valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. We're walking through this valley of the shadow of death. Let's don't grab for shadows. Let's look for light. Let's look for understanding. Let's look for the wisdom of God. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. There ain't no spirit of life. We roar all like bears and mourn sore like doves. We look for judgment, but there is none. For salvation but it is far off from us. For our transgressions and are multiplied before thee and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us and as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgression and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking op oppression and revolt, Conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. What to say? Because they had not a love for the truth. We're living in a generation they don't have a love for the truth. The Bible says because they had not a love for the truth. God turned them over to a reprobate mind. He caused them to believe a lie. He caused them to believe that that really isn't real. That really didn't happen. That's just a figment. That was just a, a vision. That was just something of a good Bible story. We had to have something to get us started. Judgment is turned away backward. And justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street and equity cannot enter. Yea, truth faileth. And he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it. And it displeased him that there was no judgment. It displeased him that there was no judgment. There was no justice. No one wants any parameters. We want to live a lawless life. We think that that is freedom. We showed you a few days ago how that these laws and these instructions of God is grace. The word says, as to minister in grace, we read that. Script the other night, not to speak those things that are corrupt, but minister words of grace for the edifying. What is, that's the word of God. When God brings us instructions, it is grace. 
Because it will lead us. It will guide us. It will save us. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. David said. He said it displeased him because there was no judge. And he saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness, it sustained him. All here, once again, we see the hope of the Lord. He said, my arm's not shortened. My ear's not dull. I'm not dull of hearing. I can hear. I can still. You got a high priest that can be touched with the feeling of your infirmities. It's your sin. He said, just repent. He said, his arm brought salvation unto him. For he put on righteousness as a breastplate and a helmet of salvation upon his head and put on the garments of vengeance for clothing and was clad with zeal as a cloak. He has seen this religious age, this religious world. People in the religious world, they say, we want to see Jesus come. You know, we were looking forward to Jesus splitting the eastern sky and him appearing. Let me tell you, when he comes, he's bringing judgment. He's bringing judgment. He came as a savior 2,000 years ago in that there stable one in that form of that little baby. He came as a Savior as He died on the cross to take away our sin. Let's don't do away with the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't let Satan deceive us and say this isn't necessary. It is necessary for each and every one of us to go through the blood of Jesus Christ. Without it, we're lost. It was necessary for Him to go to the cross. He would have never went if it hadn't have been. Satan wants to water these things down. We got a better understanding. I don't want to ever get a better understanding. We need that simplicity of the cross of Christ. Put on righteousness. According to their deeds, accordingly, he will repay. Fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. To the islands he will repay recompense. He sh so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And the Redeemer shall come to Zion and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord. As for me, this is my covenant with them, saith the Lord, my spirit that is upon thee, and my words which have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, nor out of the mouth of thy seed, seed saith the Lord, from henceforth forever. The Redeemer, he's coming forth. He's going to come to Zion. He's going to come to his people. Oh, has his people transgressed? Have they went astray? Have they done wrong? Yes, it said at the midnight cry, they all were asleep. But they're going to repent. His people is going to recognize where they're at. Why? Because of the word of the Lord. And they're going to repent of their sin. Daniel said, I, 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 I repent for me and my people. Lord, give us some Daniels. Who is willing to stand in the gap to call out and say, God, forgive us. But it said, and unto them that turn from transgression in Jacob. You could say, look at the transgression in the church. It said, even in Jacob. What? Satan has got in and he's caused people to doubt. Sometimes we go through problems. We go through 
things in life. And we become oppressed. We may even become depressed, but we become oppressed. Satan just closing in like a dark cloud. Sometimes it feels like a fog. Sometimes you're like, God, what exactly is going on? I don't know if you've thought that way. I have. Lord, what is taking place? What are you doing? What am I missing? These other men began to call out on God. God answered. I'm saying, Lord, let me call out on you. Because I know, as I said the other night, he's still in control. God is still in charge. He's still in control. And it don't matter. It don't matter if I leave here and just flip my lid and just lose it. It has nothing to do with it. It's still the word of God. And we can still stand on it. And God's word is sure forever. It will stand forever and ever and ever. And as long as we're standing on this word, we ain't got anything to worry about. We're just checking occasionally. We're just looking down to see where our feet are planted. That's what we're trying to do this morning. It's kind of push back some of the vines a little bit. Some of the erosion, some of the dirt and things is kind of covered in on the foundation. Sometimes we've got to push a little bit of it back, make sure the foundation is still right there. Our feet are still planted. Make sure that something hadn't moved. While we managed to hear a while back, don't move the foundation. People keep trying to move it. They want to move the landmarks. The Redeemer is going to come. Even in the midst of all this religious cabacle, there's a spirit of deception out here that is sweeping the world and it's blinding the eyes of the people. Blinding their eyes. He said he's going to come to those that turn from transgression from Jacob. I turn from it. Coming back to the Lord. Jacob, Israel, church, house, people, family. You might have went astray, but that ain't got nothing to do with it. That don't make it right with coming back to the Word. And then what's he say? The next chapter he said, Arise and shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. He said in 55, I've given him for a witness of people, a leader, a commander. He's given us a leader this morning. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. I want to be identified with him. I want to be identified with him. He is our commander. He is our leader. He is our Messiah. He is our Savior. And he is the one that's going to lead us through in this dark hour that we're in. He's going to see us through. You just hold on to the word of God. And everything's going to be all right. It doesn't matter The circumstances. It doesn't matter the naysayers. It don't matter what the Pope says. It don't matter what the politicians say. It don't matter what the religious say. This right here will stand forever and ever. Amen? Can we stand together? So we see things coming in as we look at this year coming up. See the signs in the heavens. These different things to tell us, to show us something. As I say, you can read in the scriptures and in that day the sun will be dark and moon turn to blood. These different things happening. See certain dates that it's fell on. The the times. Those different feasts. As was said, God is the one that set the dates on those feasts. Only He could have known that it would fall all the way over here on those times, those seasons. So we can't, we can't do that. We can't fix that. See, all knowing, all knowing God. I'm glad that we have a more sure word of prophecy this morning.
No matter what the situation, I do believe that the Lord is with us. He's with His people. He's in His church. See? Sometimes we just have to kind of move some vines. We might have to move a little dirt out of the way. We have to move the things that would obscure the brightness of the day. It's kind of like it's been, you know, it's just rain, rain, rain. But the sun's still shining. It may be cloudy. It may be dark. It may be overcast. It may be raining. It might be sleeting, snowing. It might be just all kind of things. There might be tornadoes. There might be just all kind of things happening down here. But that sun's still shining. Ain't we know where it's, it's faithful. It's just right there. It's right there. All we got to do is get past the clouds. It's like those airplanes you go flying. Sometimes you start up through them clouds and you just think they're going to last forever. But after a while, all of a sudden you peek out. Look, there's that big, beautiful sun. You look down, there's all the cloud below you. You just left that realm. You can leave that realm. You can leave that realm. Satan, he's going to attack. That's just what he does. See, we can counterattack, can't we? We have a hiding place. I'm glad we have a hiding place this morning. Hour of deception. Living in that age, that world. Been told, Jesus told us. The apostles told us. Beware. Beware. Be cautious. Stay with the Word. Stay with the Word. Sing course together. We'll let you go. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Oh, the light of the glory of His unveiled faith of his own face of his own face